question is from Tom LeBanc, official. What are the benefits of caffeine cycling and how should I do it? Yeah, you know, the benefits of cycling any type of a substance, including caffeine, that has uh, such an acute effect on the body. Makes it awesome again. Yeah, is this. Is like <laughs> When you look at a substance, you want to ask yourself, what are, the, what are the benefits I'm getting from this? So this is what, I, this is what I've done this with caffeine. Yeah, so why am I taking this? Yeah, I look at caffeine, I think to myself, the benefits are I get lots of energy. I'm up. I feel less pain. I'm a better human. I feel basically. more motivated. Uh, you know, my athletic performance goes up. So I want to get those benefits from caffeine. Now, what are the negatives that I can potentially get with caffeine? Well, I can get nervous. It can affect my sleep. It can cause elevated heart rate. Um, it can affect my digestion maybe poorly. So I want to maximize the positives and mitigate the negatives. Well, here's what happens when you use a substance like caffeine consistently. Your tolerance goes up very quickly with caffeine. Because your tolerance goes up, you need more and more to try and get some of the benefits. But as your, your, the amount increases, so do the negatives. And at some point, the negatives start to outweigh the positives. So the benefits of caffeine cycling are maximizing the benefits and minimizing the negatives. But it takes discipline. So like for me, I found that caffeine three days a week is ideal. Three days a week, I have about two to 300 milligrams of caffeine before my workout because that's when I get the most benefit. And the days in between, I don't have any caffeine at all. When I have it every single day, I notice that after a short period of time, because caffeine really, you, get, you gain tolerance to caffeine very quickly. I notice that having it daily, it just starts to turn into, I need caffeine to feel normal, mm. which to me is very much, uh, I've lost the benefit. This is true for a lot of everything. substances. Yeah, everything. pretty much anything. Yeah, I think, I think it's with all drugs. I mean, caffeine's a drug. Uh, and it's one that we it's socially accepted that we all do it. And there's a Starbucks in every corner. But the reality of it is, I mean, personally, if I if I want to enjoy the benefits of the drug the same way I did the first you know handful of times that I had it, I, I have to cycle off it to get that same feeling. So uh, and I, and this is so individualized. Right. I, I mean, if you looked at mine, Sal, Doug and uh, Justin's caffeine consumption it's all different and it's to each their own you know what i'm saying like some i really enjoy a cup of coffee every single morning i don't know if i'll ever i mean i, I when i cycle off i don't have it but i don't think i would consistently do something that sal's doing where uh it's I only, only a few days a week yeah right? only a few days a week i enjoy having a cup of coffee every single morning it's just something i enjoy uh to do but i also have uh, just these things that i pay attention to and that is you know one cup of coffee turns into two then turns it into three then turns into four and, you know, before I know it, I'm doing that and then I'm having a pre-workout or having energy drink on top of it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm, I know myself uh, and what kind of like how that scales. And so I just kind of have this, hey, once I get to a point where I'm having, you know, four cups of coffee, which sounds like a lot, but I'm actually saying real four cups. Like most people's mug is a cup and a half in itself. Like once I get to a place where I'm, I've drank four cups of coffee, uh, which is basically two big cups that I'd have in the morning. Once I'm like reaching for more, that's always my sign to go back the other direction. And that's just kind of how I, I always do it. And I go back the other direction by scaling back first, which that, that four cups is now like three to two to two and a half to eventually one to then going to a fast where I'm off of it completely. And I, it, I, for me, it, it only seems that I have to take about a week or two of none at all to get that same feeling when I get back on it. It's the same thing that I, I met when I mess with things like Kratom. It's the same way that I mess uh, with things like cannabis. Uh, I notice the same type of effects. I, I, something that could be uh, start with me just a little bit uh, every single day to multiple times in a day. And once I feel myself scaling up on any of those types of drugs, I, I, I wing myself off slowly. Then I go to a fast um, and then depending on how long I, I'll fast a little bit longer with weed typically. Uh, but with caffeine, I take about a week or two off and then come back and it feels like it's the first time I've had caffeine again. Yeah. The slow weaning process is more tolerable, isn't it? Cause it's like going from four cups to none. That's not going to happen. Oh, that's brutal. It's no. brutal. And so there's a different way. There's a few different ways you can cycle it. The way Adam's talking about, I think is a uh, is a better way to do it if you wanna if you wanna come down and what I've typically recommended to clients was to reduce their caffeine intake by a quarter uh, every week. So after four weeks they're off. So it gives them a four week period. So it's like four cups goes to three. Do that for a week. Goes down to two. Goes that. Do that for week one, and then none, and then reintroduce it. 
The other way you could do it is by doing what I'm doing now, which I actually prefer this because I hated the complete fast so much. Like I hated the week that was off. My workout sucked. It was just it was terrible. And I didn't like it when my tolerance was up either. There was like a, a few weeks there that sucked too. So the other way to do it is just to use it in a way that doesn't need me that that doesn't require you to cycle it. Like again, like what I'm doing, three days a week. I don't need to cycle it. It's just three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's it. I'm strict with that. I never have to go completely off, um, and I, I avoid that. Week oh yeah, or two I think of, if, I think if you're mm-hmm. using it less than your, I mean, if you're, uh, yeah, if you're uh, using it less than what you're off of it, you're going to be fine. Yeah, it's when you start getting to where we're at, where it's every day, and then it's <laughs> yeah. multiple times a day, and then you're at. Yeah, just I as enjoy long that time. cup, man. I'm going to be honest. Like that's that's one of those things, like. I have gone off before, but it was just like, oh god, this is not my existence. Well, I like the ritual. <laughs> I like the ritual of it. Yeah, I really do. I enjoy the the smell. There's a lot with it. It's the not the smell just of the coffee it. brewing yeah. in my house in the morning. I enjoy sitting down and reading articles and sipping on the coffee. So, for for me, it's not just the caffeine effect, although that's obviously an amazing side effect of it. It's the ritual. of It's it like too. a cognitive prime for me. Like I mean, for me, like I need I need that 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 length of time drinking it in order to like uh, arise and, and become aware you know <laughs> of, of my world in front of me so that first cup for me is is not gonna leave but the rest of it <laughs> cup zero yeah the rest of it like i i will like scale based off of just like you guys are talking about it can get to a point where your workouts you, you just don't have the energy and you know that you need the stimulant to, to be able to you know fuel that energy into the workout that's a problem like i don't need that i don't need you know something right beforehand to get me up and and lively so uh i do adapt to it very quickly yeah, too. Ca- caffeine consumption has really exploded uh more recently with the with the the, the widespread consumption of coffee um and energy drinks yeah cuz coffee wasn't consumed by teenagers and kids in their Maybe in their twenties in college, but definitely not teenagers. And fuck, coffee was an old person's drink, and it tasted gross. Yeah. Now they're drinking coffee. Energy drinks didn't really exist. I mean, the only energy drink I can remember as a kid was Jolt Cola, and I think it had fifty grams. Yeah, 50 that, milligrams. Jolt Cola and Mountain Dew. I mean, Mountain Dew. And those is weren't those weren't pretty high in caffeine, and those weren't considered energy. drinks. They're nothing, no, dude. They no, 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 no. It's yeah. like forty eight milligrams sugar, of really. caffeine, which is which is nothing. Yeah. Um. It, so consumption has gone up. Now caffeine itself is not bad. But if you have an intolerance to it or you're sensitive to it, it can be very bad. Mm-hmm. And this is different from person to person. My tolerance for caffeine is way – Doug and I have a very low tolerance to caffeine in comparison to Justin and Adam. Yeah. So, so the appropriate amount for me or Doug – is far different than the appropriate amount that would be for for Adam or Justin. I also th- this rem- this like conversation reminds me too. Reminds me of that old Seinfeld episode where they master my domain, hmm. right? Do you remember that one? No. They, you don't remember that? Master, no. Yeah, master of your domain, and they're talking about uh, uh, f- uh, fasting from uh, masturbating, right? I-, I find if I if I catch myself using words like need or have to. Mm-hmm. Um, or right. things like that. Like that's, I always challenge myself. Like I don't want ever to feel dependent on anything yeah. like that. Trying Any- to see the connection between the, the episode of masturbating and the- <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's a, being, being addicted to anything. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. right. So you, you brought up porn earlier in this episode and I, 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 it all, it all, to me, it's all the same. It's all some, whether it be a, you know, you know, physical energy addiction or it be a, a mental stimulation addiction. Totally. Uh, anytime I catch myself saying I have to or i need or i want every day uh i always should be a red flag yeah i always challenge i always challenge that and then i always restrict myself to prove that i'm in full control of 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 this meat wagon i'm not a slave to anything and i think that's a good practice in anything and everything And the ritualization of uh morning coffee um is definitely a piece of why it's so hard to stop and supplement companies uh, who do pre-workout supplements, so the first ones to come out with pre-workout supplements, were brilliant because they understood that if they took a product that you could feel, like, and it's got full of st- stimulants, that you could ritualize, have this before your workout, because what does every fitness person do? Work out. How do we ritual? If you could ritualize a supplement... You have made a lot of money. And, they did, and they did, and that's I, why it's the number one seller for every supplement. And company. I know a lot of people who work out who do not work out unless they have a pre-workout, which I find pretty fascinating because that was never a thing when right. I was nope. when I was growing up. 